Have you ever had somebody tell you something or point something out to you and you felt like it was a criticism and you took it personally or it really hurt? This is really, really common. It happens to a lot of us. And so I help people understand how to let that go. And if you'd like to find out more, then stick around. Hello, my name is Elfrida Manahan Vaughan of Metamorphix. And this uh, video series, Under the Circumstance You're Totally Freaking Normal, is for people who think maybe there's something wrong with them, who wonder about who they are, or who have absorbed messages in their life that, that makes them feel like they're, they're less than, or that they can't be confident or fully be themselves. And it's to help you to understand that there is nothing wrong with you, that you are perfectly normal based on the life experiences that you had, and that you have choices to be able to be more of who you want to be or to be more authentic in your life. In this video I really want to talk about criticism and how we ingest criticism and how it affects who we are and how we live our lives. So you know one of the things I always say when I'm teaching and working with people especially one-to-one -one, is to to realize that when somebody says something to us it really has nothing to do with us. It comes from their frame of reference or their experience in the world and that what they're trying to do is to either protect us from something or sometimes to make themselves feel better by pointing out our flaws. And so that creates this, this sense of judgment in people. Now, I grew up in a, a hypercritical home environment and I ingested an awful lot of those messages. So I often felt like I was stupid because my mistakes were pointed out to me. I felt like I didn't look good enough and I worried that if I gained weight that people would judge me and they wouldn't trust me or that if I didn't always have my makeup on and look really really presentable that people would reject me or think less of me and they were all the messages I ingested because of the criticisms that I was exposed to. I worried about what people thought. I worried also about how people felt and that came from the, the messages I received about making mistakes maybe where it impacted somebody else. So that's those things that we hear things like, well, you know, look what you made me do, or you don't care about me, or if you cared about me, you wouldn't do that. Now we inadvertently say these things all the time, and I'm not judging my experience or, or my parents for those experiences because they weren't doing it to, to actually make me feel bad. They were doing it because of their own needs. And so sometimes the criticisms come from a place of love because they're trying to protect us from making mistakes or from feeling the way they feel. Sometimes the criticisms come from a place of power, of needing to feel more powerful or feel in control. And so my own parents' traumas and, and stressful experiences in their life influenced the way that they communicated. And my experiences then as a child that didn't really have a bigger frame of reference ingested those messages so that they became part of my own awareness and influenced how I was in the world. Now, it didn't happen until much later that I suddenly realized um, as an adult that I was trying to fulfill some expectations of other people and not really actually knowing what I wanted myself. You know, did I want to look a particular way or behave a particular way in certain settings? And so as I got older, I started to break the rules the rules that were imposed on me. So I, I wore, you know, less makeup for a long time. I mean, I know I have makeup on today, but I only wear makeup on certain days in the week. And a lot of the days I wear none. And I'm perfectly happy to go out and about without makeup on. But that was not something I grew up with. It was like, it was, it was frowned on that I would actually show myself in public not being dressed appropriately or not having nice, you know, makeup on. It was frowned upon when I gained weight and I have through periods of my life where I've gained considerable weight and it was frowned upon that there was something wrong with me or that I was failing in some way. If I didn't speak in the right way, if I, you know, made mistakes maybe in, in something I communicated, it, I, I, I felt like I was stupid. And that wasn't because that was the intention behind the message. That was how I absorbed this message. But as an adult now, and at the stage I am in my life, I recognize that it's time to break down those messages and let them go. And so I work with people to help them to, to lose those messages, to leave them in the past with the people who pass them on so that they, you can be more objective and, and have more choice and, and live something that's called a more intrinsically motivated life, which is coming from the inside saying, well, what do I want? Who do I want to be? How do I want to live my life? 
And so one of the things I find really useful is, is a multiple perspective process. And so this is where you maybe hear somebody say something and rather than taking it literally or taking it from our perspective of our vulnerabilities. So if somebody criticized me about my intelligence because I'd grown up worrying that I was stupid, that would hit a nerve. It doesn't now, but it did in the past. And so that was my bit. And the other person's bit was, well, what were they trying to do? So I, I use an exercise now where I try to do a multiple perspectives view. So for example, recently I, I saw somebody post a comment on Facebook about how stupid people were for wearing masks in their cars when they were alone. And initially I kind of thought, yeah, what's the point in doing that? And I thought, okay, let's do a multiple perspective view and ask why might that be the case? And so I started to think of the reasons why somebody might do that. So they might do it because they've actually just dropped somebody off and they're aware that the other person's breath and uh, may be still in the vehicle. And if COVID is an airborne, uh, airborne virus, which it is, then we need to be mindful of that. Maybe they're collecting somebody and they realize they don't want to be breathing in the car because they're picking somebody up. Maybe they're, they are dropping the car to somebody else who's going to use it later. Maybe they're just traveling in between shops and it's just a couple of minutes of journey and they thought it was better to leave it on than take it off. And so once I thought of this, then I realized, okay, there's way more reasons why somebody would do that than simply because they were stupid or a sheep or that they didn't understand. Now, the other side of it is in judging maybe the person who says that, I then have to do the same process and think, okay, am I judging the person who made that comment? And if I look for, at that from a multiple perspectives, then I recognize that maybe that person needs to feel like they understand what's going on because it gives them a sense of control in a world that feels quite out of control at the moment. Maybe they're afraid and, and that by pointing these things out, it helps them feel like they have greater power or control. Maybe they want to feel better about themselves and that by pointing out that somebody else is, you know, less clever than they are, it makes them feel a little bit superior and sometimes we need that. And so using that perspective, then you recognize that the message that that person spread or shared was to do with them and their insecurities or their fears or their needs. And the person on the other end may be listening, then, you know, if they were to hear that criticism, then they will take something on from that. So we have to remember that whatever is being said isn't about us. So the person who criticizes isn't criticizing because of us. But what is our responsibility is what we choose to absorb when we hear those messages. And if we get triggered or if we feel insecure, then we need to expand our awareness of ourselves to ask the question, well, what causes that? What am I telling myself? What's my story? So that we have the power to change it. Now, I work a lot with people to help them to do that because sometimes it's hard to do it on their own. And so I support people through my coaching by using a mixture of a process to do with post-traumatic growth, to do with metaphors, somatic awareness, mindfulness and acceptance and commitment coaching to help people to recognize these processes so that they can break them down, drop them and then become somebody who's more intrinsically motivated, more aware of themselves and who has greater choice in how they want to live their life. If it's something you're interested in, then please get in touch. You'll find my website link below. If you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't already, I'd be really grateful. I'd love if you watch some more of my videos. And remember, no matter what you're going through or how you feel about your life at the moment, under the circumstances, you're totally freaking normal.